So, without further ado, I introduce Mrs. Jean Barrington. She's just fabulous. She's also blind. Got to get it so she can see. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbors, hi. Hello. Just good to be here. Um, I know, this is supposed to be about things we're passionate about, and I've got to tell you, I'm not very passionate about public speaking, but because I did it for a job, I learned how to do it pretty well, and my thought was, because you're all adults, and because it's also known that um, many adults are terrified of standing in front of a group of people, and and they don't want to do it. And you all have things that you're passionate about. And I was thinking, possibly if I just give you a couple of hints that'll make you relax a little bit, next time Chris does Tiny Talks, you'll come talk about your passion too. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, oh my goodness, I can't see. I have this problem of not being able to see and I, I do most often work from notes, so be a little gracious for my light here. Um, okay, so here we go. Basic public speaking in nine minutes flat. Here's your clues. This is the obvious one. Be prepared. Seems right. Public speaking, you need to be prepared. It's a bigger thing than that. If you know about what your subject is, like I know about public speaking, and to get this down to nine minutes it took me a, a while because I know a lot about it, and I could write a course. I could uh, spend a whole semester at school teaching you about public speaking, but I've got nine minutes. So learn how to get that down to whatever you want to talk about, down. And time's important. Time's really important because if you talk too long, you're gonna lose folks. And if you talk too long, your host isn't going to appreciate it. You're, gonna, you're going to um, set the schedule. You're gonna get things off schedule, whether it's, uh, in my case, like a worship service, because I preached for so many years. You know, if I rattle on for 40 minutes, that's throwing everybody <laughs> off schedule. So. Pay attention to your time. Pay attention to your time. Um, hmm. Oh, the other half of that being prepared of, of your subject is when you know it, you have to learn to cut down. When you don't know it, when your kid comes home from school and says, I really need you to come and talk to my class about the mating rituals of African frogs, and your mouth is hanging open and you have no idea what the kid is talking about, but he has promised that you will be there. With that information, you have to do research. You've got to get those books out. You've got to figure it out. You've got to know what you're talking about. And don't kid yourself. Just because your kid might be in kindergarten, I'm here to tell you that they are the toughest audiences there is to talk to. They will have questions that you cannot begin to believe. Probably not answer either. So what's next? We've researched folks, kids and adults. Ah, know your venue. Know where you're going to be. Know if they're going to have microphones, if you're going to need a microphone, if they're going to have a stage, a podium, plug-ins for your stuff. Know if your voice is going to carry. When you speak, you're not speaking to just the people in the front. And the furthest your voice goes to the back wall, it'll drop down. It'll drop down and they won't be able to hear you. So know what your venue is. Know if you need a microphone. Some people are very soft spoken like this and you can't hear them. I always have the advantage at the church of having Lola Lorraine, who always sat in the back row, who was the preacher's wife, and she knew. And one of my tips is that my voice will drop down. It will just Drop down. And Lola, bless her heart, is in the back going. <laughs> <laughs> and I know 
them <laughs> that I have dropped down and she's and I just I always kept my eye on her always knew where my voice was so if you're doing something repetitive like I was doing you have to have a someone in the back that can, that can tell you that Let's see all right we talked about climber states then once you've gathered all your information or cut down your information to what you want or need, then the next important piece is to practice. Write it down. Read it through. Say it out loud. If you can, go to the venue when it's empty so that you can have a sense of it. If you can't, I know you've been to the venue because you've researched that, if it was at all possible. Then you need to walk around in your bedroom visualizing with your eyes closed. Oh, maybe that wouldn't work too well. You might trip. Sit still. Visualize yourself giving the talk. Visualize people in front of you. Be really, really comfortable with that. Now, there's lots of different schools on this. Um, I think it's really important for the speaker to be comfortable and also make the audience comfortable, but the speaker needs to be comfortable. So, uh, use a manuscript if you have to, but if you use a manuscript, don't just write it down and read to people. Know your manuscript. Know what you're going to say. Use your manuscript as a guide. I used to, in the beginning, I would write everything out, and then it went to outlines, and then it went to a three by five card, and then, you know, after so many years of doing it, um, I developed a style and a pace, and, a, and I was able to just know what I was going to say. But the thing you need to do when you know what you're going to say, the most important part about that is to learn your transitions when you're moving from point to point. You. In your head, you have to have a cue, a sentence that, okay, I've finished that and I'm moving on. Now I use notes again. I use an outline again because I just haven't done it enough. I, I don't think I've spoken in front of a group in probably two years and I, it, I can't keep it in my head anymore. The next piece about public speaking is know yourself. Know your ticks. I had one colleague that used to preach like this. And it wasn't the walking that drove me nuts, it was that his shoes squeaked. <laughs> squeak, and he talked, squeak, and he talked. So somebody really needed to say that to him. At one point in my life, I, I had quite long hair, and I was talking, and you know, finally, one day, Kurt said to me, you know, I don't understand why you've got your hands in your hair all the time. You know, it was forever. And from then on, it got pulled back and into a knot. And eventually, it got to this. Like, and I spray it so like nothing moves. <laughs> and I don't have to. Fit. But the idea is be comfortable. Make sure your clothes are comfortable. That you don't have to think about. And, excuse me, George. Um, generally neutral. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it that yours is part of the uh, show. <laughs> For the rest of us, generally neutral clothing because it's not so much about you and what you look like um, as with the manuscript. It's it, using a manuscript. It's you're not an actor or an actress. You're there to give information, to share information. So try to just be neutral. That's often, I think, why you see pastors in long white robes. So people aren't distracted by the clothing or the issues that they have. Um, the other thing about knowing, oh, I think I told you before, my voice drops. And it's because I, I have a loud voice that can boom way out there. And I've had that since I was a little kid and I was pretty much criticized for that. So it, and so I tend to overcompensate and I speak low and I kind of lose it. If you know that about yourself, then get a Lola to be in the back, back row for you. Um, get, 
get your friend or your spouse or somebody, like Kurt said to me, get your hands out of your hair. It's distracting. You need to know those things about yourself. Um, hmm. Keep your emotions in check. If you're at a, a public meeting especially, and you want to share, or you've got issues to talk about, then, um, he's doing it. <laughs> he's, to, he's giving me a little flag there. Um, if you've got issues to talk about, keep your emotions in, 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 intact, in um, neutral. I don't care how angry you are, or how sad you are, or how excited you are about it. Um, if you are the one that's speaking, people are going to remember your emotions. They're not going to remember what you said. They're going to remember that, wow, was she mad at that meeting, or why did that bring her to tears? They're not going to remember what you said. So try to keep your emotions neutral when you're speaking. Okay, we're finally at the time when we're going to get up and speak. It's the day. It's the time. You've shown up at the venue, and there's a few things that you should do. First, if you're, well, if you're calm or if you're anxious, but especially if you're anxious, visit the restroom. You know, you'll do a lot, a lot better. You'll be a lot more comfortable. Be one less worry. If you've taken care of um, that churning intestine, that full bladder or that stomach that is right here. And it'll be one less thing. And when you leave the restroom, make sure that there is a toilet paper stuck on your heel, that your slip is tucked into the back of your skirt, that your fly is zipped, gentlemen. Check all those things because it's going to be obvious to the people in front of you. Then, when you get right here, you just take a deep breath and you relax and you smile because people are going to smile back at you. They are and you're going to relax and they're going to relax and it's going to go just fine. And one thing else that I've learned is that generally when it starts to come out of my mouth, I'm so focused on what I want to say that I don't really think about those things that were making me nervous before. One time I was preaching to a congregation and the woman, that was, I was a guest pastor or preacher at that time, and the woman said to me, I'm so sorry for the baby that was crying in the background the whole time. And I said, what baby? What? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know it. I was focused, and you will be too. I want to leave you with Three, no, no, I'm not even going to give you three, I'm just going to give you two. Two things that I think are really, really important to remember if you're going to speak. People want to hear what you have to say. If they didn't want to hear you, they wouldn't be there. So just relax. It's a good crowd. And this is the most important thing that anybody ever said to me before I started public speaking. And thank God I heard it before and not didn't find out the hard way. If you are wearing a mic, and very often you will mic before you're going to speak, shut the blessed thing off before you go to the bathroom because <laughs> Nobody wants to hear those sounds, and you are not going to want to face that crowd. So, there you go. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a, a five minute question and answer period. Okay. If, if needed. And so, who's got questions? She's got answers. <laughs> Have you heard about Toastmasters? I have. Have you done it? Uh, no. Um, I did my postgraduate work in, in speech, and so I, I didn't. Because they have a say. Well, that not they don't want you to get try to get rid of the butterflies in your stomach. They just want you to get them flying in formation. <laughs> that too. That's what was 
the name that you were asking? Toastmasters. 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 Okay. It's a good group. They yeah. teach you a lot. They make you um, able to be comfortable being in front of people, and that's that's a great group. Okay. Answered all those questions, right? Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Did a great job. Thank you.